What's up, sunshine? It is Thursday, February 27th. I'm Coy Wire. Welcome to CNN 10, your 10 minutes of news where I simply tell you the what, letting you decide what to think. Happy Friday Eve. Let's get some good energy flowing, make this an excellent day. We've got some interesting stories for you, so let's get to it. We start today in Ukraine, which is marking a solemn third year of Russia's invasion of its territory this week. When Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February of 2022, Analysts say Russian President Vladimir Putin expected to seize all of Ukraine in a matter of days. Instead, intense fighting ensued that led to three years now of protracted battles. While Ukraine has led counteroffensives boosted by military, humanitarian, and financial aid from its Western allies, Russia has been gaining territory from the start. Since the 2022 invasion, a CNN analysis of data from the Conflict Monitor, the Institute for the Study of War, found that Ukraine has lost control of about 11% of its land to Russia. That does not include land already lost to Russia and Russian-backed separatists when Russian forces illegally and annexed Crimea in 2014, which would bring the total to 18% of land lost. The conflict has taken a large human toll. More than 10 million Ukrainians are estimated to be displaced, some fleeing to other parts of Ukraine, while more than 6 million Ukrainian refugees settled in other parts of Europe. More than 40,000 civilians have been killed or injured in Ukraine during the fighting in the conflict. Questions remain over what it will take to end the conflict. Our Ivana Skatola takes us through the territories that will be key to any Ukraine-Russia deal that could end the war. The control of occupied territories will be a major part of any deal between Ukraine and Russia. I think it's important to re remind that it's not just territory, that it's people. Russia claims all of the Ukrainian land it now occupies. That's roughly 20% of Ukraine's territory, plus it claims additional land in the east. But Ukraine has always said a deal must include a return to its pre-2014 borders. So which territories are we talking about? The southern peninsula of Crimea has been under Russian control since it was illegally annexed in 2014. Experts say that's unlikely to change in a deal. It holds strategic military importance with its location on the Black Sea, meaning Russia can reach the Mediterranean and Middle East easily. And it was a launching pad for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russia is pushing United States especially to recognize Crimea as Russian because it's a question of Putin's personal pride and legacy. To understand these regions, we must go back to 2014 again. After Russia annexed Crimea, war broke out in Luhansk and Donetsk, an area known as the Donbass. Russian-backed separatists captured parts of these regions, declaring independence from Ukraine. There's a lot of um, economic assets, connections, highway and railway, that it makes uh, more sense to kind of take a whole chunk of it. Fast forward to February 2022, President Putin ordered troops into the Donbass, just a few days before the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. In September of the same year, Moscow annexed all four regions, recognizing them as Russian territory. Putin called it the will of the people. Thousands fled, and life has changed dramatically for those who stayed. The uh, humanitarian situation, especially in smaller villages and towns near the front line, is horrific. People sometimes are melting snow to make tea. On the other side of the conflict is territory seized by Ukraine. In August 2024, the country launched a surprise attack on Russia's western Kursk region. Tens of thousands of Russians were evacuated from the area. President Zelensky confirmed at the time that its incursion aimed to create a buffer zone to prevent cross-border attacks from Russia. We have no indication that Russia is willing to make any compromise. And now with President Trump actually siding with Russia on this, Russia has no incentive at all to make any concessions. For those Ukrainians who remain on those territories, I think the best case scenario would be if there would be an agreement that those people who would like to leave have the right to do so. Pop Quiz Hot Shot, the first modern Olympics held in 1896, were hosted by what country? France, Greece, Germany, or Sweden? 
Your answer here is Greece, which was the host country of both the modern games and the original ancient games, which took place more than 2,000 years earlier in 776 BC. It was history in the making over the weekend, or her story. American alpine skier Michaela Schifrin became the first athlete in the sport to win 100 World Cup races. The two-time Olympic champ has been making waves in the sport ever since she brought home a gold at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi at just 18 years old. Her big win over the weekend was the culmination of a fierce comeback after Michaela's first attempt at that iconic 100th win. Last November, she took a serious fall, crashing out of a race, and that led not to only physical injuries, but a lot of mental and psychological stress and strain as well. And while Michaela may seem like a superhero at times, one of the things I've come to love about her and my conversations with her over the years, she's not afraid to show us her true self and that she is indeed human after all. And she's open and honest about her fears and doubts. It's all part of the journey. I spoke with her this week and asked all about her journey and what advice she has for the next generation. You, Michaela, are a difference maker. You're using this historic milestone to create positive change for the next generation. $100,000 for 100 wins. Your Mick 100 reset the sport campaign you're on a mission tell us about it yeah i'm collaborating with share winter uh, foundation which their the work that they do is to help bring youth in the u.s that would otherwise be denied access to the sport of skiing snowboarding kind of winter sports on the mountain it goes so much beyond me and what i'm doing it's, it's about the team. It's about the people who have, we've all done all, all the moving pieces and all the work we've all done to get to this point. And it's really a symbol of the beauty of the sport and the fact that we have enough passion to, to do this and to put in that work and to go through it together. And I just thinking like how wonderful it would be to use these numbers and records to actually share winter with more people because it is being out in the mountains and experiencing the outdoors especially on a mountain is so wonderful and i really think like i'm talking about the ptsd and the mental challenges of ski racing but being on the mountain is healing it's it's mentally so healing it's such a beautiful thing and there are so many people i think that would benefit from it um so being able to sort of share that with a whole generation of youth is, it's just an incredible opportunity. It's something that puts way more meaning around this 100 number than I could have ever imagined. That is incredible. You are incredible. What, what's one bit of advice you have for the next generation of Michaela Schifrin's out there? Maybe something you'd tell your younger self. I think looking back to my younger self or giving advice to the next generation would actually be the the advice of the generation is like you're doing this for the passion of it and uh and try to keep your eyes on that target even though it can be challenging at times today's story getting a 10 out of 10 goes to a new science that could transform our understanding of the red planet new data from multiple orbiters and landers exploring mars suggests a mineral that forms in the presence of cool water may be responsible for the red hue the new analysis of the dust covering mars points to the iron oxide called ferrohydrite which would mean it formed on mars when water could still exist on the surface. It's a game-changing discovery that's giving scientists clues to understand if Mars was possibly habitable millions of years ago before the planet grew colder and more inhospitable. For today, our shout out, we are headed to Northport, Florida to send some love to the Wildcats at Woodland Middle School Rise Up. Hope you have an awesome day today, National Chili Day, did you know? One of my favorite meals. And I'm going to give you a secret tip for making the perfect chili. You can only use 239 beans because if you use just one more, it's too farty. See you tomorrow.